as i said it's our pleasure to be a part of this online webinar there must be various uh, forum discussions or instances between you as a chartered accountant and your actuary with respect to employee benefits and its uh, accounting hence we thought not to restrict ourselves in explaining types of benefits and assumptions but also to highlight important points which add, uh, which add value to the topic uh post our discussion with chairman sir mr arpit kabra regarding the friday fundas we spoke with a few of our industry friends and colleagues regarding what do they expect from such a seminar and based on the responses that we got we have collated a few important points also to explain the valuation we have added a slide uh with the calculator to explain the actual method of valuation uh we will try to keep this session as simple as possible however in case if you feel at any point you need you have a question or something you can please write it in the question and answer section or we will address during the session or post section uh, post session uh, during the question a uh, question and answer section thank you and let's begin Hi everyone. This is Jayesh Pandit, and along with me is Mr. Nirav. He is also an industry expert as regards the pension and the other valuations. So uh, this time, what we have done is like uh, it's a, a virtual session. So what we thought that uh, let's have a panel discussion sort of it, so that it uh, don't become monotonous when the speaker goes on speaking, and uh, then so what uh, we would. Uh, uh do is uh, discuss uh, between us and try to explain the points what we are trying to explain first we'll uh, keep uh, uh, that the, whatever points what we discuss these are our personal opinion and uh it's not not the company's opinion so that that we, we keep in mind so that because, uh, that's a professionally what uh, we have to first clarify that these are the personal point uh, so let's start ganesh yes so as um shabda explained gratuity is not a topic which is um, very not known to everyone everyone knows about it however uh, we feel that there are few points which can be ponder in front of you all what we will try and do is we'll try and have a discussion between jayesh pandit nirav he, they will share their experiences on this so we have a list of points in front of us so first is i hope the slide is visible in front of everyone and we are audible also can someone just uh, confirm this slide is visible right hello hello rahul ji maitri is been confirmed uh... Yes, yes yes okay fine okay, thank you thank you thank you uh see basically uh, we have started with uh, the once you start a company what happens right so as far as uh, uh, once you start a company what is the requirement for gratuity so uh, that is form a right so form a what is the form a right so form a is to be submitted uh, to the commissioner of uh, uh, employee commission employment uh, that uh, my company has started and now gratuity act is applicable right so it's not it don't end at form a uh, the, the company company uh, the second point which is seen uh, i don't know how many of when you are visiting for audits have you seen the gratuity uh, act applicable to that company is put on the notice board Actually, Actually, frankly speaking, uh, in in corporates or anywhere who have registered under Form A should put that notice and and all companies on the notice board. The gratuity act is applicable and what gratuity is payable. Correct, correct. Right. So, so that that's one point to start with. So it's a part of compliance, right? So generally, it's uh, <laughs> being ignored or. Uh, uh we may also not have done form a so i can't say stay on that but that's that generally ignored so it's part of a compliance uh, which uh, it's it's a beginning of uh, of, of the journey right so uh, then first we will be talking about gratuity so uh, gratuity is uh, uh, as per payment of gratuity act right and uh, we will try to cover some points which are not discussed or which are 
are not known, right? So uh, there is uh, a, a section four and the payment of gratuity act, which says that uh, insurance of gratuity is mandatory, right? So uh, so now now to say on that or what is that insurance is basically it's the protection for the gratuity if anything happens to the company. But no companies, uh, actually no insurance company have any product which covers this gratuity as a, as a compulsory insurance. So first point which comes is that state government have to notify actually in, in every state case yes, this compulsory insurance which is required for, for all companies who are under uh, payment of gratuity act. Right. So only Andhra Pradesh had uh, uh, promulgated that the uh, insurance of gratuity is mandatory. Section four was, uh, uh, but then after that, Andhra Pradesh was bifurcated to, to Telangana and uh, Andhra Pradesh. So I don't know the actual status of that as of now. But uh, those companies uh, which are there uh, uh, registered in Andhra Pradesh uh, must have a uh, insurance uh, for their gratuity, right? So when we talk about insurance of a gratuity, right? So everybody would think that uh, we're taking a policy from an insurance company is an insurance of a gratuity, uh, which is factually not correct because at present, whatever policies which are being uh, taken uh, by, by the uh, employer is cash accumulation plan rather than the insurance of gratuity, right? So for example, if company closes, you know, so what yeah. happens? So, so when, when company closes, whoever employee have completed five years or not completed five are, are eligible for gratuity. But if that at, uh, say whatever accumulation plan, say, say there are hundred rupees in that and liability is 50 rupees, then what happens to remaining 50? Right. So, so it's other way around. Like, other, uh, sorry. Uh, like yeah. uh, the liability is, is 100, 100. Uh, but the asset is only 50, right? So, so insurance company will pay only 50 and 50 is uninsured, right? So it's not an insurance uh, which is available as of now for gratuity. So if company closes, whatever is the amount available, that is only available. So, uh, so those who are uh, working for say Andhra Pradesh uh, companies can look at uh, whether the company is having insurance because I don't think any company would have an insurance because no, no insurance company has come out with a product which gives uh, insurance for gratuity. So that's one part. Uh, uh, practically, it is impossible, but theoretically, we are supposed to follow it. So just, just to differentiate, okay, there is a group gratuity plan and this compulsory insurance, both are different things. So we, 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 we might be seeing there are group gratuity plans available, which, which is insurance, but that is again cash accumulation, what sir said. It's not compulsory insurance, which covers fully all gratuity liabilities. Yeah, okay. So does, it means insurance is not compulsory and hence we would have insurance is compulsory, compulsory, but the product is not available. Those are product is not so, available. So those product. companies uh, which are in Andhra Pradesh would be violating the law. <laughs> okay. Right. So that, that's uh, one part of it. Uh, second, because we are, when we are talking about uh, the insurance, right? So uh, insurance can happen only when, when company contributes uh, to a gratuity fund, hmm. right? Uh, so always the, there are questions whether funding is compulsory or not. Right? So when is com funding is compulsory or so? As we just uh, spoke, funding is not compulsory. Except for Andhra Pradesh, it is ah, not compulsory. Except for Andhra Pradesh, it is not compulsory. And however, once you create a fund, then whether uh, the question uh, that comes is whether the contribution is mandatory or not. If see, the insurance company is asking a question, uh, uh, asking a contribution of X amount, does this mean they have to actually contribute it or they can just take out their hands and not contribute it into the fund? So ju just going back one point behind, mm -hmm. whoever company wants to have uh, that contribution and, and that benefit, they should have first the approved gratuity trust fund from income tax, which okay. is which is which is required to contribute and maybe to get the tax exemptions that that will cover later points. But that is first point is approved gratuity is required. Uh, we would be dealing more with the insurance plan because uh, ninety percent of the companies uh, take insurance plans. So we are not uh, actually discussing the private uh, managed fund because there are very few and there are very big, right? So. Uh, but uh, then it may uh, deviate uh, us from uh, actually discussing the points which are 
uh, covering 90% of the organization, right? So now uh, coming to uh, the, the trust part, right? Uh, which is not the, the point which is not there here is that uh, generally a uh, client comes to us and says that uh, which insurance company ka plan, right? I hope uh, Hindi in between is fine, right? So, uh, so what, what generally is asked is uh, ki which insurance, uh, which company's insurance plan I take, Reliance, HDFC, Tata, uh, LIC, SBI, which, which plan would be better, right? There are companies who take insurance policies of gratuity from say more than one, more than one insurance company, right? Uh, when we talk about say, suppose I I I I've got say three crore worth of liability, I've taken one crore from SBI, one crore from LIC, one crore from HDFC, right? And then I compare uh, compare uh, who is giving me a better plan. But legally, if you were to uh, uh, legally read uh, Rule One Hundred and One of the Income Tax Rule, it says that company can either have a, a policy with LIC or with any one insurance company, right? So they cannot have more than one, one insurance policy uh, with them, right? So if, if I'm having three policies, then I have already violated uh, rule 101 of income tax rule, right? Hmm. Uh, there are repercussions to it. Nothing hmm. has happened till date, but if at all, a commissioner of income tax was to say that you have not invested uh, your amount as per uh, rule 101 of the income tax rules, all your income would be taxable and contribution would can, can get disallowed. Right? So you are looking at a huge uh, repercussion uh, by uh, just going uh, with the uh, flow right. that I, I, I go with uh, three, four, uh, three, four policy right. as per the rule 101. Either LIC or any other insurance company. It is not or any other insurance companies or LIC and it is either or, right? So they, this is a, a, a point which has to be considered whether uh, the company is having only one policy or more than one policy. I have seen in many of the cases uh, there are more than uh, one policies and uh, uh, that that's not as per rule 101. So that's part part of the uh, uh, tax. Uh, tax planning. Actually, it's a point of concern for many uh, companies. Mm -hmm. and, but when we talk about these contributions, um, do we have any restriction on the yearly contribution towards the insurance companies? Uh, yes, we have restriction, uh, which is 8.33% of your annual basic, if already funded. Okay. If you are funding it first time, uh -huh. when uh, you are say, say planning to fund. So whatever past service liability company have, they can fund fully. Either in five installments, not mandatory, in equal, but they can invest uh, in five equal installment or different, but only past service liability, first time contribution. Oh, okay. And thereafter, they, they can have 8.33 restriction of their average annual basic salary. Oh, okay. Right. So now, now coming to the tax planning, what is being generally done by the company? Right? <laughs> there are companies. Uh, which has uh, got a liability of say uh, of a crore, their fund is also also of a crore, right? But then they say uh, this time I've got a good profit, I'll contribute 8.33% uh, 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 to the fund, right? Yes, right. Or, or the, so, so uh, technically uh, it should not should not happen, but uh, that's that's what trustee will have to uh, because in India. Uh, trusteeship is not taken that seriously, right? Uh, trustees are just acting uh, what company says rather than trustees are uh, what trustees outside India are acting. They actually uh, act as per the rules of the trust. So uh, if my fund is fully funded, I cannot take more money. Okay. Or other way around, uh, there are companies uh, wherein uh, the fund was lower at, uh, because they did not contribute in the earlier years. And uh, in the year of profit, they will say that I'll contribute to, uh, say 25% of my salary, right? Company has got, got a cash flow. Hmm. But if I'm a trustee, which is following the law, as per the income tax rules, I cannot accept that money, right? So as a trustee, that has to be debarred from the 
demand that uh, I will not accept uh, more than 8.33% uh, of salary as a contribution, right? So uh, that that's one part because uh, generally this has been taken as a tax planning rather than employee security, but uh, one has to keep in mind uh, that there are rules which are to be followed. Uh, there are investment rules which are to be followed. If I'm not following investment rules, I'm looking at a disallowance of my uh, contribution as well as income of the trust being taxed. Makes sense. Makes so, sense. Just to add in this, 8.33 is the upper limit. It is not mandatory. Every year, company have to contribute 8.33%. It depends on what is what is their obligation as on valuation date or, or as on the funding date, but whichever they are planning it. So, so, so again, uh, that's funding is not mandatory, but what happens if you don't fund in a particular year that or contribution you don't do. So, so what happens, whoever insurance company will, will give you a lower credit of interest for that particular okay. year when it is not contributed. Right. So, yeah. so like uh, if uh, I say the state of the insurance company that, okay, my fund is fully funded, I will not contribute. Right. But insure, for insurance company, it's a business, right? So they would say that unless you contribute, uh, uh, I, I will not give you the interest which is uh, available because your policy becomes uh, in, uh, inoperative and your interest credit would be lower, right? So that that's one part uh, which has to be uh, looked at. And secondly, uh, uh, there are like if, uh, if not if, uh, uh, because it's an insurance company, they cannot do any banking business, right? So for any any policy which has been taken for gratuity, there is a, a life risk covered by, by the insurance company, right? So insurance company, uh, uh, it uh, uh, in some of the cases, it pays gratuity for entire future years of service, mm. or in some of the cases, uh, just as a namesake uh, to have an IRD approval, they will say that I'll pay 1,000 extra, right? Uh, so, so that just to avoid uh, so, uh, the, the uh, date benefit is just 1000 extra. So it's uh, how company is taking the, uh, this particular thing uh, because uh, it's a business tactic for the insurance company, but uh, then the, uh, whether, whether it's beneficial to the uh, mm -hmm. employee or not has to be seen, right? So, uh, so now uh, that, so that's one part then, then uh, the point which was there, which is there in the second bullet is uh, the contribution, right? Contribution, uh, whether a company should make directly to uh, to the insurance company or they have to make uh, to the uh, uh, gratuity fund. Hmm. Hmm. So, so we, we have seen many companies come and say, okay, we have already funded, we have given amount to LIC, XYZ amount. Uh, they don't have approved trust fund, but they have paid to LIC directly. Uh, 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 approved trust fund would always be there because uh, no insurance company will open, give a policy unless there, there is a trust date created and submitted to, to the insurance company. So that's one part. We will not go into detail of uh, how to get a approval or how much time it would take a uh, approval. But uh, let's uh, take uh, that uh, they have filed with the uh, commissioner of income tax. And uh, uh, so, uh, so uh, he, uh, uh, as per the income tax act, contribution to the approved gratuity fund is allowed as a business expenditure, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now when I am contributing, when I am giving the, a check to LIC, it is not a contribution to approved gratuity fund, right? So there were case laws uh, wherein the, the contribution were, were disallowed. Mm -hmm. Finally, it got allowed by, after litigation, but then one has to see why, why to go in for the litigation. First, they have to contribute to a gratuity fund so that uh, uh, it follows the income tax rules. So once the amount is, uh, is contributed to the gratuity fund, from gratuity fund, amount has to go, uh, go to the insurance company, right? So uh, uh, through trust or directly by, from the company, there are companies which is making direct contribution, but they, uh, uh, they open themselves for a disallowance of expense and going into litigation and getting, getting it allowed. But uh, that's a precaution one can take. So it's a very important point to note for each and every entity right. who so, have a trust fund. So, mm -hmm. so from the tax audit point of view, if it has gone directly to directly uh, to the uh, 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 insurance, insurance company, fund. whether I would uh, say that uh, it has not met the requirement or not, it's a question mark. Oh, okay. 
There is one more thing which we usually see uh, in the trust transaction, and that is there are trust related expenses which trust actually incurs, say a salary or a audit fees. But more than that, um, even the mortality charges, fund management charges, can they actually go from the trust on uh, um, on behalf of company, or it is disallowed? Uh, this is also strictly from the tax audit point of view. Okay. Uh, see, basically, uh, uh, as per the uh, uh, if you open any of the approval letter which uh, company would have got for the gratuity fund. Uh, there is always the uh, always the, uh, uh, there are four or five four or five uh, disclosures which are being made. First is that you have to prepare an account, mm. file return of income, and I think if I remember is uh, correctly on the fourth point it says that all expenses for management and running of the trust has to be borne by the company, and company cannot claim that expense for the tax purpose right so so for for example uh, if the uh, uh, tax uh, sorry uh, uh, audit, audit fees are are paid right uh, technically or from the point of view of the tax purpose uh, that has to be added back uh, uh, added back uh, from the expenses uh, secondly like uh, we have seen in 99% of the cases uh, that all the expenses like fund management charges which are being charged by the insurance companies or uh, uh, mortality charges uh, uh, which are being charged by the insurance company are being paid to the insurance company but uh, they are uh, uh, treated as a contribution to a gratuity fund and from gratuity fund it goes right mm -hmm. so so strictly if you if you are following the income tax rules mm -hmm. and the approval which has which has come to come for the gratuity fund uh, whatever expenses which are uh, which one can identify which is related to the trust has to be added back uh, for the purpose of tax so that's also part of the tax audit. Uh, it may not be that high, but uh, in of the big big companies, it may turn out to be 10, 20 lakh or so, right? So uh, mm -hmm. that that's uh, uh, one thing. But generally, uh, uh, it's being uh, ignored, or uh, it's I have not seen any of the companies adding back these expenses. Okay. This this expenses are to be paid directly by company, or it is to be reimbursed to the trust. Whatever they do, if okay. they pay directly or they reimburse, it has to be added back as a added as back. A, it cannot be considered as a contribution which is allowable as per the contribution to a gratuity fund, right? So that that's uh, one part uh, which one has to keep in mind. So from the tax audit point of view, uh, these expenses are their contribution by the uh, employer directly to the. Uh, 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 Insurance company is there, so that that's uh, what we thought. That let's uh, put this uh, for uh, points to pointer. Like we don't say that uh, uh, this is only correct, mm -hmm. but uh, this is what uh, we understood from whatever is uh, being written in the act and the approval order. Correct, correct. So, um, in fact, what point that we got from our industry friends, um, and this was again one more common point, and that is. Whenever there's a delay, in, just to avoid a delay in payment, um, what they do is they make the payment directly to the employees, and then from the trust or from the insurance company they recover that benefit payment figure. First is whether it's allowed. Means can I have a transaction from a trust to the company? Or you know, can, can you explain what what, what is what that? what Ganesh question just just to say that okay, if employee is leaving and that company have approved trust fund. And so liability of two lakhs is to be paid. So for ease of transaction, first the company pays two lakh rupees to employee, and then they recover that amount from the approved trust uh, fund, and they take the credit of that in that particular transaction. So so uh, particularly this transaction is not allowed under income tax because first, if employee has to be paid, it is to be paid directly either by a company or uh, to be claimed from the trust fund. So when the money is coming back to company from the trust basically it is an income for the company uh, I'll, I'll put it uh, more more elaborate see basically uh, generally what happens that uh, company pays this uh, gratuity to the outgoing employee mm. then they tell to the trust case that uh, you uh, apply insurance company may claim dalgo and uh, insurance company pay, pays the, this uh, claim claim to the trust 
then company says ke bhai aapko 2 lakh aa gaya hai you pay pay back to us so trust will give, give a check in the name of the company or to let and that's done right uh, as per if we were to uh, read the income tax act it says that any contribution by the employer or interest there on is paid back uh, to, to the uh, to the employer it has to be treated as the income of the employer in the year in which it has been paid back right so that is nothing called uh, reimbursement right so i it's whatever trust is given to the employer is part of the contribution to what they had made made uh, uh, to the trust in the past years right so uh, if this has been done Uh, then employer uh, will not be able to claim the amount paid uh, uh, as a gratuity to the employee because they have not passed that entry and this amount which has come from the trust to the employer would also uh, be taxed as the income of the employer uh, in the year in which it has come right so uh, this has got lot of repercussion because there are many companies who are doing this and uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, till the time uh, they are not caught, it's uh, going on, but uh, there are repercussions because it won't get allowed. Just ease of transaction because bank account to bank account transfer happens, check issue. So, so no one sees the entry. Actually, it is it is allowed under income tax or not. And what will happen if if there is any queries for that? Okay. Because now now we are the right person to ask this question. Okay, is this a reimbursement? Then it might be treated as income. Right. So that yeah. that's one thing which uh, will have to be kept in mind when uh, we look at uh, uh, this gratuity fund. Or uh, so that uh, sure contribution is a topic on which we can go on talking talking a lot. Or trust is a topic on which we can go on talking a lot. There is one more situation which was um, um, brought in front of us and. it was all about a contribution amount which is shown as a part of deduction into employees salary or cpc uh, as a gratuitous deduction one is can we classify it as a employee contribution if yes then how are we going to give the impact in the provision um, um, of an organization for the gratuity benefit so let's be classified as an expenses let's take a example right yeah, let's, let's say take let's, let's take a example there is an ex employee right uh, whose monthly salary is uh, say 1 lakh of rupees yeah. next uh, company uh, says that on on this 1 lakh you are going to get a gratuity also right yeah, yeah. so for, say uh, for for the ease of uh, ease of the, this uh, uh, 4.86% uh, so Uh, four four thousand eight sixty is uh, taken as a, a contribution towards gratuity, right? Hmm. Now, if this is considered as a CTC, right? Hmm. Uh, the employer do not actually pay four eight six zero and recovers it. Hmm. Hmm. No, no, they don't. They don't. So they don't. So so uh, it's just uh, how you are showing the gratuity. For example, employer says that I have recovered it. Hmm. So, if employer has recovered it, whether they are showing this as a liability, because uh, no. their salary expense also uh, sh should go down by this recovery, because by they are uh, so that that's other other point whether employer shows the them uh, as a uh, liability. So uh, this this liability actually when when it is part of CTC, no companies uh, keep the track of that accumulation. Maybe one percent, two percent companies keep track of this. Okay, okay, this is year on year which is accumulated. Now, when we see this accumulation versus actual gratuity payout, with both will be different because your four point eight one percent, which is part of CTC, will be particularly for that particular month of salary. And when when actual payout has to be happen, it is to be last run salary. So, so fifteen days salary per each year per of year of service on last run salary. So this amount will never match. Oh, okay. Uh, generally, uh, uh, there is a so there is a question uh, from Shruti, and it says like this: Generally, company like LIC adjusts all charges against interest earned, and track trust makes contribution of net of amount. In that case, how it will be possible to bifurcate the amount uh, for disallowing? Uh, see, Shruti, when when you look at the uh, uh, demand which is coming or or the uh, note which is coming. right uh, they will show this bifurcation that these are the expenses which has been netted off against the interest right uh, 
Uh, so, so that what would happen that uh, that net netting of interest, so that amount which has been suppose for example, say ten thousand has been netted off of this interest, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, trust has got ten thousand less interest. Less interest because of this. So now this ten thousand has to come from the employer as a, a reimbursement of expenses to, uh, to the trust. And that ten thousand has to be disallowed in the uh, in the companies. Uh, so generally, in any of the any of the insurance uh, uh, notices, you'll find this bifurcation. It's mandatory to give uh, bifurcation. What are the charges, uh, fund management charges, and all this, right? So uh, uh, technically, it is possible and it should be done. That's what uh, what we say. <laughs> practically what we we, do, we are not doing. But that, this is what the loss is. Just to add in this, if if uh, you ask your clients uh, what is this LIC statement, what they give as a demand letter or the fund statement. So they clearly provide that okay, what is actually contributed, what is one year renewable term assurance paid or if it is NAV linked policy, they separately shows the fund management charges, mortality charges, other charges, GST, all those details. So this, when you adjust. Yeah, fine. Right. So now uh, coming to uh, uh, recovery of gratuity. See, there are companies who uh, give uh, loan to the employee who will gratuity ke samne adjust kar lega, right? hmm. uh, that, That's what practically has been going on. But uh, by, by law, gratuity cannot be adjusted against any of the loan. right? So it cannot be adjusted. So if if someone goes to the court, company will have to pay gratuity also and loan is gone. Right? So, okay. so it's not allowed uh, to... Uh, uh, recover any gratuity PF or any of the retirement benefit uh, because they are their sacrosanct. So uh, government wanted that to remain stat, uh, <coughs> safe. So they, they don't allow any of this to, thing to be adjusted against any of the loans. So recovery of loan which many of the com uh, companies are doing but uh, that's not, not allowed as per the law. Right? So uh, these were the things uh, which uh, we thought that uh, let's uh, a part of audit and how much uh, uh, cases where uh, uh, this gratuity uh, deduction also because we see that it's part of CTC. So uh, uh, so now coming to that part of CTC wala also if, uh, uh, because they will have to pay 15 days salary per each year of service, right? Mm. Irrespective of whether it was deducted or not deducted. So uh, I don't think CTC helps here, but uh, then if it is part of CTC, then the employee can ask for that amount, even though they, if they don't complete five years, right? So if they say that uh, you, you had already deducted my two years gratuity, uh, I am going, you pay, pay me what, what was my deduction, right? So it would become very difficult because the uh, company has not created that liability of that deduction, the notional deduction in the books, right? So that that's a problematic area which is like because we generally don't create this notional liability. If it is created, then fine. But uh, from the uh, practical point of view, it is uh, we have never seen someone creating a notional liability out of it. So just out of curiosity, is it an income for a company if they don't pay? That, that, if they don't pay, it's a notional income. Uh, notional right? income, right. It's a right. notional, notional right. income. So right. uh, that's uh, how you account for your uh, uh, management uh, uh, information. That's where it would come in. Okay. Okay. Now, say you have a fund which is already created, and uh, however, that fund is kept into a FD, but the FD is in the name of company. Will it classify? Ideal situation, say, if we read the definition of fair value of plan, so it won't classify. However, if the money is kept with the related uh, uh, insurance company, will it classify as a uh, a fair value of plan asset should we go for months? We have seen some similar uh, statements. See, see, like uh, coming to one part, right? Jo uh, small company mein hota hai. What they say ki maine to gratuity ka FD bana diya. FD bana diya. To wo to main dusre kiye sa. Yani I will not use for anything else. So I have already uh, created a FD. So I'll hmm. show it as a funded scheme, right? Hmm. But technically, it's not a funded. It's a year marking of the amount, right? So I have I have put a FD, hmm. but uh, that FD is my own uh, 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 
I can withdraw FD any time. Right? Okay. So it cannot be treated as a investment. But uh, many say that my my FD is. I have done for someone. I am not going to use show this as a funded scheme. But technically, it's not a funded scheme. Coming to your other part, right? Uh, uh, it becomes a related party transaction. Like uh, if I am an insurance company. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 if I am a company which is subsidiary of an insurance company, for example, if I am a State Bank of India and I, I take policy of SBI uh, life insurance, right? Uh, technically, that investment will not be treated as an investment, right? Even though I have, I have put in one lakh crore or ten thousand crore, everything would get disallowed, right? Uh, oh. As far as uh, as far as because it's a related party transaction, so it won't uh, be considered as an asset of the. Uh, of the organization so that that is what, what uh, one one will have to so there are companies like if you are doing uh, any of the subsidiaries or uh, related companies right uh, uh, the company the companies which have got banks as well as the insurance companies right and uh, there are ma- many corporates so if you are doing audit of that corporates uh, you need to keep in mind that uh, this related party uh, investment is not Cannot be considered as an investment as far as accounting standard goes. Okay. However, if there's a money which is lying into such insurance company, then what should be the ideal situation for that company to do? Means what should uh, be the advice? They, they should be they should be putting in non-related party companies only. So that's uh, uh, we uh, one thing we we'll have to keep in mind. Okay. But for practical purpose, if they are keeping it, they should change uh, the insurance company. Yeah, like like uh, like like if you are doing a, a audit of a bank, right? Uh, their own registry fund would be there in their own bank, which is not allowed, <laughs> right? So yeah. uh, let's uh, so uh, not an insurance company, right? Bank may be like they mm-hmm. keep keep a account in the bank, which bank, is not allowed. Not allowed. Their own bank. Their own trust bank. account. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very correct. 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 However, since you brought at this point, um, so if I have a trust account, but in the same bank, ideally it will not be allowed. Uh, however, uh, what we have seen uh, generally is we get the insurance company statement, but it is excludingly excluding the trust account balance. Ideally, I should have a trust account statement also, and the com- combined amount should be uh, um, classified as a value of asset. See, generally, what happens? Ki, uh, the the client gives to us the insurance company का statement के ये मेरा fund है. हाँ. But then there are bank accounts also of the trust. Correct. Right? Because unless they have got a bank account, they will not be able to contribute to, to a gratuity fund or gratuity fund. So investment is not possible. Correct. Right? And it is impossible to have a zero balance in in the bank account. <laughs> so, ninety five percent of the cases we have seen. Is that generally bank account of the trust is never considered for the purpose of accounting valuation. Who mm. oh, they will just say that this is my uh, insurance ka statement and why my investment and mm. nothing more than that. Okay. Right, so yeah. that that's a bigger challenge of what we are facing because then suddenly at one point of time they will say that my bank may be ten lakh per day. Right, uh-huh. so how to account for that ten lakh becomes a huge problem. Huge problem, and at the same time, if this ten lakh rupees is utilized to contribute into the insurance company's fund, and now in that particular year, uh, the insurance company statement will show a t- contribution which is coming mm-hmm. into the trust fund. Again, it will become an issue. Yeah, right. So, Ideally, it will not be considered as a con- contribution by the entity. Yeah, because that is already contributed by companies past years, which is lying in trust account. Right, so it's a problematic area as far as uh, uh, in our cases, but ninety five percent of the cases we just we are just told that there are only yeah investment or no one is right. But there this uh, trust account and the problem what Mr. Ganesh and Nirav has said that uh, when the contribution goes from bank account to the uh, to the insurance company's account, hmm. uh, it cannot be treated as a contribution because when the money came from Company to the bank account, which was treated as a contribution. Now, from from trust account to the insurance company, it would it should be treated as an investment rather than the contribution. So, trust is investing with the insurance company, and company is contributing to the trust. So, if we bifurcate this, that company can only contribute to the trust, hmm. and trust can only invest, hmm. then all these anomalies may go oh. right. 
now what we say that whatever does uh, insurance company may whatever is shown as a contribution is a contribution which is wrong because yeah, it's yeah. a investment by the trust to in uh, with the insurance company yeah, yeah. Yeah. just to add in this ke it might not be only insurance company so normally we we should ask for audit accounts uh, the uh, audit uh, uh, unaudited or audited trust account so where we will have all details where the investments are lying so it might be company might be having a fixed deposit also which we might not not considered in because it is said ki okay gratuity fund lic gratuity fund insurance company so normally we have multiple investments also by a trust account makes sense makes sense question question no i think it's Older. the same thing old story yeah dan dan ka ki okay and now this is again a common topic means wherever we have a group entities or acquisitions which happens you see uh, there is a transfer in and out that happens and um, idle situation says if i have a fund then yes the transfer of entities liability from one fund to other fund is possible but when it comes to unfunded scheme how it should be treated means let's uh, this transfer in and out is a major topic and which has been ignored by many right it has been ignored by the companies as well as uh, uh, there are so many repercussions hmm. right let's uh, go with the examples right yeah. so this, this majority errors or or ignorance happens in group companies where where holding companies there and multiple subsidiaries there and an employees has been transferred from one company to another with with their continuation of service Hmm. Uh, merger and acquisitions, right? So le let's uh, take different examples, right? Let's take a take a example wherein uh, uh, there are a set of employee gets transferred from one company to another company, right? Uh, there is a fund created for a uh, for a company wherein the the, the employees are there. Hmm. Dusre company me fund nahi hai. in hmm. the company in which they are getting transfer there is no fund hmm. right so what would happen now first of all what amount should be transferred first is what amount generally company say ke 15 15 by 26 into salary into service jo aata hai transfer karte ha right? Uh, right but that's not the correct value because the money value goes on changing each year right for example kisi ka gratuity is 20 lakh right Company transfers twenty lakh to other company. Other company would earn uh, on this twenty lakh, or when employee goes out, वो उसको twenty lakh ही देना है. Hmm. So right. the transfer transfer run company loses loses out on it. Yes. Oh, okay. I need to yes. make the payment in future. It's already twenty lakhs approved now. Uh, so I I should not be transferring twenty lakh. Twenty lakh rupees. So generally, it is advisable to get the actual valuation done at the time of transfer. And transfer the amount which is actually calculated based on different assumptions, right? Okay. So that that's one thing uh, which uh, uh, that's one part of it. Second is कि चलो पैसा नकी हो गया, right? Now hmm. say instead of twenty lakh, fifteen lakh आता है. Hmm. Right. Now this fifteen lakh is lying in the trust account. Hmm. Hmm. Of transferer. Of the transferer. transferer. Whatever. Transferer. Trustee. Can only pay only pay gratuity, right? So, but वो वो employee तो छोड़ के नहीं जा रहा है employee is not going out, hmm. right? So, trustee will not be able to transfer to the fund which is so not created. Transfer he don't have any fund created Haan. approved trust fund. Approved fund नहीं. So so approved fund to approved fund only transfer is allowed. Now now coming to coming to other part. कि वो बोलता है अच्छा ट्रस्ट से नहीं जा सकता है तो कंपनी से इस दिन आई आई ट्रांसफर दिस 15 लाख तू तू अदर कंपनी और अदर कंपनी से इसके बाद मैं मैं वो पैसा ले लेता हूँ सो सो नाउ व्हाट व्हाट हैपेंस सो इस दिस इनकम फॉर द ट्रांसफरी सो सो नाउ दिस कंपनी ट्रांसफरी कंपनी हैज रिसीव्ड द मनी फॉर Now coming to other part, GST is applicable to on everything. Oh so for this God. transfer also. All, all, all. Okay. Right. So that amount, 15 lakh, to over 18 percent will be lag jayega. 
So this, this will be to be treated as the transfer has to issue invoice yeah, yeah, to yeah. transfer. Uh, debit note, credit note is also right. part of part of this. Okay. Issue, right. So uh, so eighteen percent also will will get uh, affected. Right. 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 So that's. Uh, but other, practically, this GST, though, no one, no one, uh, no companies uh, no uh, take one is it, doing, yeah. Right. Now, now coming to other part. Right. Chalo, ye sab ho gaya. Now this employee for for which. This fifteen lakh was transferred. Right. Mm -hmm. He resigns from other company after one year. यहाँ तो उसने पांच साल जो भी काम किया था बीस लाख किया था other company one year has paid twenty lakh to that employee. Right. Right. Now the employee को जो बीस लाख मिला is he has got that twenty lakh for only one year service. Hmm. राइट तो उसको ग्रेचुटी जो जो डिडक्टिबल ग्रेचुटी है विल बी विल बी ओनली हाफ मंथ ग्रेचुटी रियली तो उसको बीस लाख डिडक्टिबल नहीं होगा तो एम्प्लॉई विल हैव टू शो दैट सपोज वो हाफ मंथ एक लाख आता है राइट तो नाइनटीन लैख विल गेट एडेड एडेड एज इनकम ऑफ द एम्प्लॉई बिकॉज ही हैज गॉट अ ग्रेचुटी फॉर सर्विस इज नॉट रेंडर्ड इन द कंपनी Right, so as per the uh, as per the for the services rendered, fifteen day services rendered in the company is allowed as a deduction. So in case of continuation of service, also uh, this is only so, only for particular. Because continuation of service yes. uh, has been taken by the transfer and transfer. Transfer, right? right? Income tax law do not say that say it's continuation. Continuation, right? right? Now coming to the company. Right. Company ne bees lag diya hai. Right. Right. So. Uh, Company ko bhi because uh, uh, the gratuity which has been paid for the service is not rendered in the company mm -hmm. would be considered as a capital cost because it's a talent acquisition cost. Okay. okay. So it won't uh, get a deduction for that ten nineteen uh, lakh. Company ko bhi ek lakh jayega. Acha company also came to claim only uh, one lakh rupees for tax purpose. Yeah. Other comes from capital. Uh, because it is it has to be for. The, right. the amount of gratuity right. is paid for acquisition of talent. Talent, right? right. Acquisition of talent is not a revenue expense. Okay, so it's a capital expense. So it's it's a capital okay. expense, teacher. Right? right. So so if you are uh, looking at uh, the scenario where in the transfer of uh, so now what happens? Okay, who is in the soup? Right. Uh, hmm. Now as far as TDS goes, company paying the gratuity has to uh, deduct TDS correctly. Right. Hmm. 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 Generally, company will give twenty lakh ka deduction and no TDS would be deducted, right? So they are violating the TDS law. Correct. Correct. So once the TDS law is violated, that expense also will not be uh, company will not be able to claim. Claim. Okay. So these are the points which are there in the uh, uh, transfer cases, right? So that's one part of it. So. Any question till what we have discussed? So then I can go to another part of uh, the transfer. I believe no. So everyone is actually just just uh, digesting that this thing might come later on the questions on this slide. Right, right. now uh, coming to how to uh, sort this out. Right. So as far as uh, the trust rule goes, as per. Uh, 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 this schedule four, uh, there is a internal guideline which has been issued uh, in the income tax, hmm. wherein it has been said that if an amount of gratuity is transferred from one approved fund to another uh, another approved gratuity fund, and by way of this transfer, employee remains in the same position had he continued in the old company, then the such transfer is allowed. Okay. Right. So so if Amount of gratuity mm -hmm. is transferred from one approved gratuity fund to another approved gratuity fund. Then the continuation of service is allowed. Right. Makes and sense. when the amount is paid by the gratuity fund, it is not treated uh, treated uh, any within the twenty lakh. Uh, everything because continuation of service what allowed because of both the companies were having a approved gratuity fund. Right. One approved one approved gratuity fund uh, amount transfer or another approved gratuity fund and. Uh, Uh, the amount of uh, gratuity was paid by the trust, so it is advisable <coughs> to have trust in all the entities wherein you are supposed to be transferring your employees. 
if you are uh, if you are going to transfer the employees without having a trust and also giving them a continuation of service uh, then there are repercussions wherein uh, the employee may get tax you may not get the ta tax allowance and uh, there are uh, if i remember it correctly in case of jasubai multimedia case mm -hmm. wherein uh, the uh, amount which was uh, uh, transferred on acquisition was disallowed as a uh, capital expenditure stating that that amount has been uh, spent for acquisition of, of the talent and it's a capital expense and not, not a revenue expenditure mm -hmm. so but it's um, uh, i am not sure of uh, the entire uh, uh, Study. case study but uh, th there th this is what the fact is that uh, if uh, we want to transfer an employee from uh, uh, one company to another company it is advisable to have a gratuity fund in both the companies transfer the uh, gratuity amount as per the actual valuation so that nobody is uh, at the uh, losing end so I have just two uh, points in this. So, so you mentioned that continuation of service is allowed from approved trust to approved trust. And you should be in the same position. That means if you are a manager in one company, you no. should be the same no, level. No, 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 no. The, then... uh, your gratuity should not go down. Suppose suppose ah. my gratuity, uh, uh, gratuity was say 20 lakh in uh, transfer e company, uh, transfer her company. Right. And by transfer, my salary is less than 15 lakh. So it is not allowed. No, not allowed. So same way, gratuity benefit also. If if transferer have the same scheme, same scheme, and, and yeah. if if he is transferred to another company which follows gratuity act, so it's not allowed for yes. that particular they, employee. Yeah, they, they should follow the yeah, scheme. Yeah, they have to follow this transferer scheme. scheme. Trans transferer right. scheme. Right? Now, just yeah. to add one more, is it allowed as a group company single fund? Uh, as far as the tax law goes, uh, each uh, gratuity fund is a separate entity by itself. Uh, so and they are assessed separately. So group fund is not allowed at all. Each entity will have to have a different gratuity fund, right? right? So uh, from the audit perspective, you get an audit for all 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 the companies' gratuity funds. And right. uh, but generally, I have seen that uh, gratuity returns are never filed. <laughs> oh. uh, because mm -hmm. so they say that LIC mein paisa, LIC se ho jata hai. there are no accounts which are being prepared uh, but if you look at the approval letter what you would have received from the commissioner of income tax uh, one of the condition of approval that you must file a uh, <coughs> return of income each year mm -hmm. so why why return of income each year right uh, this income of a gratuity fund we are treating as an exempt income right but it has to be Claim right, <laughs> it, it cannot be considered. It's, it's an uh, it's an exempt income, right? Unless I file my return, hmm. there is no way income tax commissioner will be able to know whether I have followed the law no. for investment or I, uh, what I have done, right? So, there is no way income tax uh, commissioner will come to know that I'm following the law. So, it may come suddenly as a uh, bolt in the blue that uh, uh, entire amount gets disallowed, right? Yeah. So it's up to the commissioner when uh, commissioner is going to ask for what we are going, what we are doing. There's a lot to keep yeah. a note when it comes to gratuity, even though it's 50 years old scheme, but too many things to remember. Yeah, because this transfers generally happens in the group companies and that's, that's where the, and the, they avoid creating a trust. Yeah. So, so the task for all of us uh, who might not be seeing the return of file for gratuity now, now that that should be a checkpoint for all all of us now. So only way to uh, uh, save one thousand penalty because the date is already <laughs> gone is that uh, as per the rules of the gratuity fund audit is mandatory so that it goes to September and you are filing within the time. Okay, <laughs> right. Otherwise, July has gone. <laughs> Right. Um, so just to move ahead, um, most of the times what, what we have seen is there's a trust deed which is in place and the employee who was working with the organization is, uh, is now being assigned as a trustee or say the company address was mentioned in the trust deed. But do we have to actually um, have a deed of variation whenever we have an employee uh, leaving the organization and he was a trustee or I'm changing my address, I'm changing my bank account. Do we, do we really need to have a variation? Let's take uh, how the gratuity fund gets created. 
gratuity fund gets created by the deed of trust deed. Okay. The trust deed is agreement between two parties. One is the company, other is other side the trustees. Correct. Right. Now trustees are acting as an individual. They are not uh, acting as an employee of the company as a trustee. Right. Suppose suppose there is a general manager. Right. General manager X. Hmm. He's a, he becomes a trustee. Right. He, if he resigns, he cannot be say, told to see, be seizing as a trustee. Because the trusteeship place is not by way of designation, yeah. it's by by way of a person, right? So, uh, so Mr. X can still remain as a trustee even though he's not not there in the company, right? Yeah. Now coming to practical part of it, हम लोग तो बोला कि भाई X छोड़ के गया उसको निकाल दिया Y को रख दिया, right? Hmm. So now now what we did we passed a resolution and said that now Y is a trustee, hmm. Hmm. so. Everything goes well, yeah. but suddenly, why defrauds the gratuity fund? Okay. okay, right. So there is no no proof wherein the why would have signed any legal document wherein he has accepted that he is a trustee, right. and uh, so 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 deed of variation is generally required in case of change in the trustee hmm. to be compliant uh, with the law. Right, the trust deed is agreement between two party. Hmm. The employer and the employee, or uh, sorry, employer and the trustees. Hmm. And uh, if one of the trustees ceases to be a trustee, uh, the agreement becomes void. Correct. Because uh, the, the second party has changed. So to make the second party valid, we'll have to have a deed of variation. File with the Commissioner of Income Tax. File with the uh, your uh, banks and everywhere, and that's that's uh, your legal uh, legal requirement gets uh, fulfilled. Same thing you have to do. Uh, uh, file with the LIC also that now these are the new trustee or or uh, SBI or HDFC wherever your insurance policies are there, right? So that's <clears throat> that's the point uh, generally which is being ignored by many. That deed of variation is never prepared. If you look at that trust deed, they would have all old uh, trustees with uh, three and half lakh limit, ten lakh ka limit wala, twenty lakh bhi nahi hua mm-hmm. juna trustee mein, right? So, uh, so if if the trust is paying twenty lakh to the uh, to the employee, trustee is actually violating the law. Makes As sense. per the trust deed, the trustee was supposed to pay only three and half lakh. Right. right. But he has paid twenty lakh. Right. So if company one company can say that you have paid sixteen point five extra, मेरे को दे दो. So so from the perspective of individual also, it is better to have a deed of variation so that all your rules are aligned with your current uh, current what you are doing. So so basically, resolution is not legally bound to anyone. Uh, no, you I... should have a trust deed uh, variation and filed with the uh, tax commissioner. Any yeah. changes? Than in your deeds. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, considering the time limits, uh, we'll just run through most of the points. Uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, so, it's again a point of discussion uh, with the auditors or with the companies. Uh, so, there is a director, and uh, the director has got a five percent voting shares. So, do we have to actually include that person into the provision? So, so because because this director is drawing a salary, is a whole time director. Mm-hmm. He is an employee of the company. Okay. So, gratuity provision becomes mandatory for that particular director or directors. Okay. Under any accounting standard. Now, what happens if he is holding more than five percent voting rights? Mm-hmm. So, as per income tax rules, uh, he is not supposed to be part of trust fund. So, when that director leaves the company. Now any payment is to be done by company itself, not from the trust funds. Okay. So that that is that is the two separate points. Provision mandatory payment from the company. Okay. If the directors hold more than five percent voting rights. Generally, also this is being ignored. They fund everything. Okay. Right. So, so so company has a liability of say say ten lakh rupees, including director. They fund fully funded. They they contribute ten lakhs. What do you think the reason behind? Um, 
not including director into the trust fund? Uh, that was uh, just to avoid that uh, uh, company funding uh, uh, this director's uh, liability and uh, getting away with uh, the contribution. Right, they what they would do the uh, twenty lakh is maximum. One can pay one crore also. One crore also. Right, so they would fund fund one crore, two crore, uh, claim as a deduction. Mm, so sense. that that's where where the deep uh, uh, point is that uh, directors uh, mm. that, that is just for the security. Uh, it was the. So so just to add in this earlier used to happen that director when he was retiring he used to increase his salary. Last moment and take majority chunk out of the fund, where company might not be fully funded. What so we have one question from GD, and what it says is: Is there any legal restrictions on gratuity trust to pay more than twenty lakhs? If trust did permit that gratuity should not be capped, tax exemption will of course be restricted uh, as per act. Uh, if the yes. trust did says that uh, there is uncapped gratuity, then you can you can pay pay uncapped gratuity. It's fine because uh, so uh, you, whatever you contribute to to the gratuity fund would get uh, uh, you get a deduction because it's part of your eight point thirty three percent of salary, uh, and uh, the employee would get tax uh, about twenty lakh. Uh, now coming to twenty lakh, which is always a question mark, is that all these twenty lakhs are uh, lifetime ceiling, but generally it's never been uh, taken right. care of. That if the person in the previous employment has already taken twenty lakh, and current maybe we give them the exemption of twenty lakh, so that's a uh, legal complication which is there. But uh, as far as <coughs> uh, this question goes. Uh, Uh, if the trustee says that it is more more than twenty lakh is allowed, it uh, one can pay. So it's employee's uh, responsibility to declare previously received gratuity amounts whenever the, there is a change in jobs. Is the okay. trust is the trust responsible to deduct PDS in case of payout more than twenty lakh rupees? Ah, uh, uh, legally and technically yes, yes because ah uh, uh, only the payer can deduct the tax, right? So. At, uh, legally and technically, trust should be having a ten number and deduct a tax and uh, uh, pay uh, pay the gratuity. Generally, it is being done that uh, <coughs> it's being told uh, that company has already deducted. Take a letter from the employee and company deducts the tax and uh, trust. But uh, that's a dicey thing to do. Practically, it is being done, but it's a dicey thing to do because only payer can deduct a tax. Right, so uh, it's like yes. uh, and coming to this twenty lakh wala, which is also uh, what we have seen in case of tax planning, uh, is that uh, who uh, uh, someone is uh, say retiring in February, uh -huh. but he will claim gratuity in month of April. April. कि भाई मेरा फेब्रुआरी में तो सैलरी हो गया तो मेरा वो इफ इट इज टैक्सेबल एंड नेक्स्ट ईयर इट इट इज नॉट टैक्सेबल सो मेरा टैक्स कम हो जाएगा राइट That is also now because the salary is to be taxed on due basis and not a <coughs> not on received basis. So the tax has to be based on any TDS we will have to do as of February and payment can be made in April. April on. So that's not part of this question, but I am just putting it because I have seen that the who February may they don't take gratuity or April may lay leta hai because uh, April income is was going to be less. Right. Thanks. Thanks a lot, GD. so moving ahead um so um i have created a fund we talked about fund 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 a lot now uh, we have seen that there are companies who have created fund with xyz insurance company but they don't make a provision into the book so having a fund and not making a, a provision is this possible uh frankly speaking uh, see what they say the maine to insurance company ko pay, paisa de diya jitna paisa diya utna mera liability hai yeah. so uh, provision is nil correct right because whatever is the liability same same is my fund uh, so provision is nil hmm. right but technically uh, if one was to look at uh, the accounting standard it says that you have to uh, get a valuation done as per uh, uh, projected unit credit method and whatever is the liability uh, if that liability is uh, less than the fund you make a provision if liability is more than the fund 
Uh, sorry, if liability is more than the fund, you make a provision. If liability is less than the fund, then you show that as a idea, prepared gratuity in your books, right? Suppose my liability is 10 lakh, my 10 fund lakh. is 15 lakh, then 5 lakh I'll have to show as a prepared mm -hmm. gratuity. That is also generally not being, because once you say that um, whatever is my uh, insurance capacity is my liability, uh, then there is always a case in wherein we are showing higher or lower expenses. Mm -hmm. Correct. And secondly, you will not come to know what is your yearly expenses. And, okay. and to add that, uh, we are not complying with the accounting standard because it says PUCN, you have to use actual assumption. Whatever funding is done, say in this example, 15 lakhs, if you are providing, then on what basis it is provided? Mm. So, 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 as sir said, either it will be prepaid. Either it will be zero, 15 versus 15, but actually valued, or it might have a under provided, let's say liability is 15 lakh, funding is 10 lakh rupees. So 5 lakh there will be under provided, which is provision in the books required against the plan assets. So it's, since neither of you brought about the point related to provision, um, um, generally uh, we get this question about whether to include a member with service less than five or not. Um, since they have not vested the benefit, why are we asking them to include uh, the those members into the scheme? So should we? What should be your answer to them? Yes, we have to include all employees because on ongoing uh, basis the provision is to be done as per act. If there is a death, the company has to pay gratuity for whatever services provided. Mm -hmm. So on that basis also, death cases there is no vesting condition as per payment of gratuity act. So you have to provide for all employees who are there on payroll. Uh, secondly, as per the uh, PUCN, you have to account for expenses in the year in which you have given the service. Right? Service. So if someone has put in one year of service, the one year ka expense has to be put in the first year, second year, ka second, third, year, third, fifth, ka fifth month, right? Ah. So it cannot come that in the fifth year I book for entire, for five, entire years. five years. So generally the clients give us the data uh, uh, once they complete five years, right? So, which is not actually uh, a case because then you are booking five years expense into the into into one year rather than booking each each five years expense in the first five years. Okay, okay. So it's better to even see whether we have the new joinees in the organization or people with service below five years yeah. are also included into the data or not. Regularly check. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um and. Since we are talking about the provision, say I never create, since I used to contribute into the insurance come, I have a asset. Um, I used to only account the contributions which I'm making into the insurance companies. Now, since you are saying that the provision is mandatory and I want to do a first time provision, I'm actually adopting it first time. Ideal situation says, what is the uh, approach that is available to me? Uh, see, I can just. Uh, Problematic area uh -huh. is one if I am under India's. Uh -huh. India's uh, says that any omission cannot be treated. You have to go back to the year one and uh, restate your account. Right? Oh. So, so India's is a problematic area because uh, if company says that I have not provided for uh, uh, in last uh, ten years, India's abhi mere ko applicable hai. Hmm. Main abhi se chalu karta. Right? Okay. So in days there is nothing called. So then there is a clause that if you can't go back to day one, then you can ignore it. Mm -hmm. But then you'll have to prove that you you don't have a data for ten years. So okay. in so in days would uh, require you to restate all your balance sheet from day one till date. If it is AS fifteen, you can just uh, route it through mm -hmm. PNL. Mm -hmm. But uh, it would be treated as a past service cost. Whatever whatever you take. It would be treated as a past service cost, which would uh, route through PNL. Okay, and when you talk about day one, it day one um, the, the day on which I adopted day, on, day one on which I uh, 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 10, 10 or one and gratuity is applicable. Oh my god! Oh my! God. So either company have to go back for ten years. Okay. Provision. Okay. GD, uh, we have one more question from GD. Uh, if a company has less than a statutory count of staff required for um, restrictions under the um, uh, registration under the Gratuity Act, 
then is the company obliged to pay gratuity uh, or they can avoid Le legally the company is not obliged to pay gratuity because the gratuity act is not uh, applicable to the company so company can avoid uh, making because if act is not applicable so anything what i want to pay is gratuitous which is uh, over and above act right so i say that i follow the payment of gratuity act uh, then i don't pay any gratuity so that's uh, because then act is not applicable to us Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Moving ahead, we already discussed about this transfer in and out. So the transfer not... in and out, I would still say it's a big uh, uh, problematic area which requires a lot of uh, uh, thinking because uh, first of all, uh, it affects TDS uh, and uh, employee taxation. Uh, so. HR policy has to be aligned uh, and tax policy also. So, so it's a big, big uh, thing what one will have to check whether if they are uh, doing any transfers. Correct, correct. And in fact, uh, if at all there's a material transactions which is happening, say there's a case of merger and I have an asset which is substantially low and the liability which is substantially high, then the difference should be accounted as a special event activity or I can just take net of liability as my net transfer in recognizing the balance sheet. Ganesh, let's take uh, all this when we talk about uh, the valuation part of it. Okay, right? Let's okay. uh, try to discuss the normal points uh, till the time what we can. Okay. Uh, then we go to, once we go to the valuation, huh. uh, then we can try to touch upon this point. So we, which would be uh, which would be, be a sync with sync with whatever what we are talking about, right? Makes sense, makes sense, right? So uh, then current and non-current. Uh, so that's always a uh, always a uh, problematic area when we uh, uh, talk about underfunded gratuity, right? Uh, let's take uh, 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 let's take uh, unfunded gratuity. What is current liability? Current liability is any cash flow which is likely to happen in next 12 months is a current liability, right? When it's an unfunded gratuity, mm -hmm. then next 12 months, next year ka payment is your current liability. Makes sense. Then it's a funded gratuity. What would be your current liability? So because because uh, you, uh, the payment is likely to be made from the fund. Correct. I have already created a fund for making the and payment. Current liability you are going to, to give to the company, not to the trust. Stress. So it will be basically your uh, deficit amount, uh, which is maybe they have to make uh, good in next 12 months, which is maybe so, contribution. So what is the company's cash flow next year is likely expected contribution to a gratuity fund is a company's cash flow, right? Sure. right. So in case of a funded, funded gratuity scheme, uh, the current liability would be uh, the uh, likely cash flow mm -hmm. uh, of contribution. Mm -hmm. And in case of an unfunded scheme, current liability is a likely cash flow on account of payment to the members. Okay. So one is contribution in case of funded scheme, it's a contribution. In case of un unfunded scheme, uh, it's, a, it's a payment to the employee. Okay. Right. Coming to, uh, even though we are talking gratuity, let's take leave, the leave has got different connotation as far as current and non-current goes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I think companies that uh, if employer do not have right to restrict the pay payment, then it has to be <coughs> taken as a current liability. Right, right. we have <coughs> opinion on that, there's right. opinion on that. Right, so now uh, when we do a valuation, we are doing a valuation based on the employee and casing their leave days on the exit. We don't do a valuation that next year they will encase everything. Correct, correct. Right? Uh, so when the valuation is done on a going concern basis, hmm. whether it would be prudent to show entire valuation as a current lab. Not advisable. So that, that's uh, because that's a a uh, burning point which we are not able to uh, uh, so this is a question which is from us to you <laughs> uh, so because <laughs> uh, audit, as a auditors all chartered accountants normally ask us ki why leave valuation you are showing as current and non current because there, there is a, a point in that ke you have 100% right to avail the leaves 
So, so why you are showing current and non-current separately? Right, so that's uh, because what we are doing a valuation is based on a going going concern basis. Mm. That is, if employee leaves, any employees who are going to leave, uh, they 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 were they are going to be paid. So that's what we consider that that would be a current liability. Uh, but as per the uh, accounting rules uh, and interpretation, if employer do not have uh, uh, has right to uh, right right to uh do not have right to restrict employee to take a leave hmm, 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 hmm. then it has to be taken as a current liability current. okay your provision approach means the way you are calculating liability should be in line with how you are making your provision yeah, for the yeah. current so, and so that, that that's that's where the, we are we are uh, still uh, struggling, struggling struggling to answer that but as a actual point we we provide current and non current and maybe companies uh, can take call on that that they provide 100% as a current Eric, we have a question. Let's take that. Wow. Uh, a question from Didi. If a staff are transferred from company A to company B with an understanding for a continuity of employment of staff being transferred from uh, transfer and company A has funded scheme and transfer of uh, staff are covered, then can we company A transfer such equivalent amount to liability from its gratuity fund to gratuity fund of B, will there be any tax? If if any amount which is transferred from one approved gratuity fund to another approved gratuity fund, continuation of service is guaranteed. But if amount is transferred from one one approved gratuity fund to a company, continuation is not guaranteed. If uh, unfunded gratuity is transferred from one company to another company, then also it is. It's only the, the case what you have said uh, that from one approved gratuity fund uh, from A uh, approved gratuity fund of company A to approved gratuity fund of company B, that only continuation of service is allowed and there is no tax implication. So we got the point that you come from, you have seen the LIC statement and they are mentioning that equitable transfer amounts. So in that case is yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Here it is. Thanks. So in 2018, we actually saw an increase in limit um, um, and uh, it was most of it thing for many of the people and it changed to 20 lakh rupees. However, uh, there was one clause which got added into PSUs or maybe for the central government employees, which was talking about index link limit. See, basically this particular thing, what we are going to discuss affects all auditor who are doing the audit of a PSUs. Okay. Right. Under the PSU, uh, the agreement which was signed uh, with the employee states that as and when DA will cross 50%, gratuity ceiling will automatically go up by 25%. Means 20 lakh ka ceiling hai. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, once the DA crosses 50%, mm -hmm. 20 lakh will automatically become 25 lakh. Right? So, <clears throat> if I am do doing an uh, audit of a PSU and I am looking at a certificate for the purpose of gratuity valuation, which do not consider the index link gratuity, then it's an under provision. So, mm -hmm. in case of PSU, there is automatic revision in the ceiling as far as the gratuity goes. And uh, it is most likely that uh, the payment of gratuity act will follow what uh, the PSU has been written. And most likely, uh, what is our expectation is in 2024, DA will cross 50% and uh, the ceiling is likely to be 25. 25. So, uh, wherever you are looking at uh, the PSU gratuity report, one should be looking at uh, <clears throat> whether the gratuity valuation is done mm -hmm. considering mm -hmm. index link gratuity or not. Because uh, it's generally it's not being done, so which one can see that because it's part, it was part part of the uh, settlement which was signed uh, with the PSU employees. So that's uh, one will have to uh, keep in mind that. Uh, Gratuity is an index gratuity for PSU and it's likely to be for, uh, under the act also, but uh, under the act you cannot uh, value index link because it's not written, but in case of PSU it is written. 
and and just to add is it is it is mentioned okay uh, as and when it is notified so it is not required uh, to be uh, approved by a parliament again okay. so uh, in case of gratuity also it has been the ceiling has been kept open they have said that now it will be notified as notified previously it was written 20 lakh now it is as notified as notified so notify by, by way of noti notification government can change and it's most likely to change to uh, i don't know whether it's uh, uh, coincidence because of the election but it's likely to come in 2020 20, that, so. that's what our expectation is looking at the da da movement no, nothing nothing no political out correct correct and in fact july is already gone so yeah. any time soon you will have a new da mm -hmm. uh, which is announced yeah. it was already 42% in february yeah. So, so four more percent is expected now. So most likely, but it's most likely. Anybody. Let's say hope for the best. No, next two points are very simple. It's all about whether should we include NRA over NRA people or not uh, into the obligation. Yeah, so see that that's where uh, we have uh, some difference of opinion the, with the clans. Mm -hmm. Right, what they say, ki by once someone uh, completes sixty years, they pay them the gratuity. Mm -hmm. And then they reappoint him, reappoint that person. Mm -hmm. Then they don't give us the data of that person for valuation. But there are many, many cases wherein the person also crosses 66. I mean, six years or more will be done. So once, the, if the employee which is reappointed after uh, retirement completes five years, the employee is eligible for more gratuity. Right. So, so that that becomes an under provision if that data don't come to us. Oh, okay. So one will have to actually look at it that if an employee is being taken uh, on a reappointment, mm -hmm. uh, whether uh, uh, that employee, what is the position of that employee? Right. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, it's a vague uh, thing, but in case of uh, Bharat Petroleum, there was a Supreme Court ruling uh, wherein the, the, it was said that if any reappointment is made. Within six months of a person leaving, continuation of service can can be counted, right? So that's a that's a problematic area if someone goes to court. Okay. So just to add in this, if if employee have crossed retirement and and there are some board resolutions, okay, that there is an extension provided for say say five years or or say x number of years, then that that employee should be considered in the valuation till their extension date. Because that will be part of their additional services if they continue after retirements. Hmm, 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 hmm. Then, if we can go to next page and come back to this, this uh, for yeah. whatever are the relevant yeah, points. Actually, measurement principles is ideal, identical for many. Yeah. Uh, let me just think about the other benefits yeah, first. Yeah. Uh, so that we can at least cover the points which we really wanted. So we we up. are just discussing points to ponder first, then the basic points, right? So I think points to ponder first. Man, we are trying to give you some uh, uh, of the points which we feel should be considered, but it's uh, your own decision whether to consider or not. But these are what we have come across in our professional life that this should be considered. Correct. Yeah, Correct, correct. So when we talk about the gratuity or any other employee benefits, we generally say that the measurement principle is same. Um, the recognition principle can be slightly different if I'm talking about other long-term benefits. Um, uh, however, there's one point um, that actually come uh, come in front of us. We have an act for gratuity. Do uh, a company or entity needs to follow any specific act, or do we have any act? Which is for the compensated absences. So, so we have something called a shop and establishment act. Uh -huh. Now that all uh, states in uh -huh. India uh -huh. have different acts that their shop and establishment who have adopted it. Okay. So under that, there is a clause for the encashment on full wages, which mentions that if employer is rejecting the leaves which is applied, then that employees are should get the full wages as an encashment. Okay. And they have at least Maharashtra shop and establishment have cap of forty five days. Okay, okay, okay. You guys will try. Um, so there's a question, and we'll try and cover it once we have this point. Yeah, uh, this uh, point. Uh, at the end, so we'll answer it uh, later on. So yeah, so we have a shop and establishment act, and when we talk about the shop and establishment, if I'm following a shop and establishment act, uh, 
it actually talks about wages accumulation too many things which is which needs to be considered um, before defining any plan any provision plan. for the uh, employees um, now most important is wages means yeah. ideally what should be classified as a wages uh, or eligible salary for giving the encashment of compensated absences so so under shop and establishment it says full wages that means your full uh, fixed, full fixed gross salary okay so so which might not have say a say uh, variable bonuses might but otherwise other way company might have their own scheme okay which which might be paying encashment on basic salaries okay why which might be violating shop and establishment if employee is not allowing the leaves but practically no employer will say no okay you don't avail the leaves let let's let's put it this way see i have got a question right uh, see uh, what is written in shop and establishment act is that if employee applies for a leave mm -hmm. and if leave is not granted okay then then the employer is supposed to pay full wages for that many days okay right now now coming to what we say ke wo sab log bolta hai ki mera to lapse ho jata hai leave lapse ho jata hai leave right so why lapse is, is being happening whether they applied for leave and not given if they had applied for leave and not given then they are they should be getting uh, full salary so so whether whether uh, that particular thing is taken care of in the hr perspective or not that's a major question because as per the shop and establishment act mm -hmm. if uh, if any leave which has been denied then for that day company has to pay pay uh, full wages full wages right so that's what, what uh, uh is is an issue which is uh, to be considered whether uh, any leave days which are getting accumulated is due to not being given leave or due to allowing them to accumulate <laughs> okay there are too many things to remember now gratuity is done now and leave also i need to remember whether so i said ideally advisable to allow people to go on leave it's their right Shop yeah. and establishment has thought, given a thought why they are thinking about having a, 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 a encashment or the leave as a part of um, the and plan provision. There is one more act that also comes of, of uh, operational safety. Op OS, OSH. Right, care Correct. and health scheme. So that has also got something to do with leave. Correct. Right. So there are so many things which are employee friendly, but whether employer uh, will be able to take that. or with the compliance as an auditor we would be able to check all these compliances right <laughs> because we may not actually go into it whether they they were denied leave or if they were denied leave then why why the uncash uh, was was not paid and okay. uh, with uh, this leave encashment uh, exemption going up there are many companies who would give uh, who would increase the leave days and <laughs> <laughs> uh, so have a, have a tax planning so Uh, that's uh, other thing i mean currently the limit limit has also gone up yeah but any point to remember about that limit means whether the we have a, a limit of 20 lakhs which is for it's, the entire tenure it's so only only on retirement only on only retirement, on retirement. not not by signing yeah. or not while in service mm -hmm. then it will have a different yeah. Um, yeah. approach altogether yeah. yeah okay okay um can i actually um have a, a limit which is different uh, than what is specified in the shop and establishment when say i could have a better i could have a better, better. i can't have a lower ceiling than this so, so 45 that... it is specified in the maharashtra shop and establishment act the ideal situation says my company should also allow me to carry forward up to 45 yeah. but not less than that not less than that less than that there could be different interpretation we are not going into the details of uh, that how to interpret, interpret it uh, in better way correct, uh, but correct. Uh, whatever is written in black and white that's what it is so uh, we have one more question from jd it says in case of leave encashment or retirement or resignation is the value per day to be calculated on ctc basis or basic salary only uh see basically uh, 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 what i would say uh, that as per the shops and establishment uh, they have said that if leave was not granted then <coughs> company should pay ctc right uh, now coming to the tax part of it 
tax part of it talks about only busy plus dia because it it goes as per rule one h one uh, h of the part <coughs> part a schedule four. Uh, so, but <coughs> as a company, uh, if you had denied the leave, then you can pay CTC. Otherwise, basic is fine. So, uh, if if I deny that, if someone came to me and said that I want leave, I say, "Nay, by you come for you work work for this day, accumulate your leave." Okay. Then I have denied denied that leave. So then I am supposed to pay CTC. I cannot pay basic. But but this this I don't know how many employers will know that this is to be paid fully because HR is rejecting the leave or manager may be rejecting that leave. So this employee is not allowed to take this leave in next six months, eight months, no, whatever time it is. India is changing months now. No one has actually. So all these compliances would should be part of our uh, uh, SAP system <laughs> <laughs> and uh, should take care of. But uh, uh, there is a. thin line between whether it was denied if it was denied ctc it was otherwise it's a gratuitous payment and you can pay basic correct correct thank you so now coming to the major part which we always uh, uh, face is that people would come and say that maine to leave fund kar diya leave fund kar diya hai Means whether it is in the name of company or whether See, basically, if we, if in ninety five percent of the cases, when we ask for the document, uh, the policy is issued in the name of the company, right? So if anything happens to the company, uh, it's an asset of the company. Hmm. So if uh, so, it it is as good as I say. Okay, but I have that FT graduate ticket already kept. Mm -hmm. So it's if it's my own asset. it cannot be treated as a funded scheme correct and i have not seen any clauses under the income tax act wherein the trust for leave can be created right so there is no separate uh, see when the amount is transferred uh, to a separate entity it is called uh, called a funded scheme or any <coughs> qualified insurance policy right so what is qualified insurance policy is the question mark because uh, the policy which has been issued is in the name of the company <laughs> and uh, uh, practically mm -hmm. who uh, company goes on changing this leave policy any yani, uh, they will transfer from one insurance company to another insurance company wherever they, they get good money right so if they are able to transfer the money from one insurance company to another insurance company then they they can take back the money also because cash is available to them cash is available to them so uh, and secondly the major part of it is that how to book income which i am going to get uh, get on this uh, investment mm -hmm. because my whatever investment i have done mm -hmm. i have to book a income on that yeah and pay tax on this mm -hmm. so uh, that's generally is not being done because that's uh, 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 they say ke insurance ka paisa hai insurance mein wo liability ke samne and whether uh, because leave is allowed as a deduction when you make a payment to the employee okay when you give to a insurance company when you invest your invest your leave liability whether you can claim as an expense that's the issue because uh, you cannot claim this as an expense <coughs> when you purchase an insurance company right yes. you can claim that as an expense as and when you pay to the employee so it becomes very volatile when you will be getting a tax break if i'm taking a tax break from day one <coughs> then i am not following the law okay and uh, by not booking a income on the, this leave uh, uh, oh, yes. that leave funds that's also a problem for leave uh, one can one would say that it's a, a mutual fund jaisa it's a capital gain so but capital gain is also now taxable right mm -hmm. so uh, how to uh, treat this for your tax purpose is a uh, big challenge when uh, there is a leave policy which has been taken because leave policy is generally in the name of the company and if if investment is of the company the income also belongs to the company So if the income belongs to the company, it has to be given for tax. Tax, yes. Correct. Correct. So if fund is not possible, exemption on contribution uh, gets why uh, so, is not possible. So tax the, the, uh, 
qualifying insurance policy uh, is is where there was a PSU who had actually uh, got that policy uh, modified in a way uh, and uh, hypothecated that that policy will not be that money will not be used for anything other than leave days. So they went legally made uh, made that uh, legal draft. And the policy was changed, uh, hypothecated. So then, then it can be treated as a qualifying insurance policy because <clears throat> money cannot come back to the company. Come back to the company. But whether it would be possible for everybody to do is still a big question. It's a big question. Makes sense. So uh, uh, this leave wala is or from the tax purpose. How uh, uh, contribution you will treat uh, for your tax or income on the leave fund? How will tax would be offered is a question mark correct and then obviously then um, it's all about how are we going to show the numbers into our books whether it will be net of value that yeah. we called it as notional asset yeah so you can and see. then the current non-current bifurcation yeah. we could also go on top yeah. um there's a myth myth is uh, all um, assumptions are coming um, uh, from an actuary and it's not the responsibility uh, of an entity. So how do you see? Means you are so, a chartered accountant also, and you are an actuary also. So basically, as per the accounting standard, uh, the assumptions as regards salary escalation and attrition rate should come from the company because they are in a position to predict what salary rise they are going to give, or what is the likely chance of uh, what is the expansion problem or expansion. Uh, <coughs> projects, uh, everything. So they can give uh, with the, what is going to be attrition, right? Mm. But as an actually, you are supposed to validate also. Okay. You cannot say that uh, company is giving in the history, they are giving 25% and they said that take, take 5%. That's also not possible. So uh, it's uh, uh, the basic responsibility is of the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, professional responsibilities of the actuary to actually validate whether the company is giving, uh, they can flag it off, right? Mm -hmm. They cannot say that by tum usko ka doi. And if companies wish to give 5% to the employee, then we cannot say that you pay 20. Last year, 25 year, now we pay 25 <laughs> But we have to flag it off uh -huh. and company can respond to it. If company responds that no, I, have, I will pay 5 only, then we have to accept. Okay, okay, okay. So this basically to understand this case, auditors are chartered accountants see only past history. And they can say, okay, past this happened. And where actually come into picture is for the future assumption. So so there should be a mutual understanding between both of them. Okay, how the business planning is done by management. What is their expectation for future? Because inflation going up, other things, promotion, we have to retain talents, everything together. So past might be giving you some hints. Okay, in past this thing happened, but but then that assumptions to be tweaked to that level, which should be mutually agreed with management as well as it should be validated by actuaries. Okay. When is we take two questions and go this? Yeah, yeah. Is, uh, so first question. Concerned. So Yogesh, we, Yogesh, Yogesh wanted to understand. Um, so we have a point which is covering the loyalty point, and his question is related to that only. So loyalty program, he's saying loyalty program. When a new customer loyalty program launch, which important actual assumptions sh should look by the auditor? Uh, see, basically it's a customer loyalty program, right? So what I understand, uh, what I understand is key like shopper shop or any any other, uh, uh, what you say, say that you go on, you go on accumulating the point. Correct. And you will be uh, able to, uh, and catch that uh, point. Uh, uh, so uh, and catch that point for the merchant is what you are going to right. So uh, from the audit perspective, see there are uh, there are points which will never get redeemed. Hmm. So there are points uh, wherein customer may not be loyal; they may not purchase again. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And there are points where where <coughs> in customer will buy. Correct. Right. Now, what uh, the provision is, is required mm -hmm. is cost to the company and not the selling price. Suppose I suppose my uh, profit margin is say 40%. Mm -hmm. 
uh, my provision for loyalty uh, loyalty program should be only 60 percent well i cannot book uh, profit as an expense profit is an expense right so first thing is what is the uh, uh, monetary part of it correct <coughs> what is the trend <coughs> past end of, of, uh, of, of the redemption and also what is likely to be future trend uh, because the your inflation also will pick, and and uh, what are the uh, uh, expiry dates hmm. because beyond expiry date it cannot go so right so uh, and most effectively based the data of this loyalty points are maintained properly Huh. So generally, we have seen that what data is what a problem, data but these are the points what uh, we would take into account while making a valuation. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the auditors also would uh, look at uh, the same thing. Correct. I think hope I answered, or if you have any question, you can ask. Second only answer, yeah. so only thing is, obviously, since you have a term um, for the utilization, then it's all about taking the present value on the current date. So the only assumption that I'll add is the discount rate. That's it. So, like, like I can tell you in case of airlines, right? In case of airlines, there are airlines, what would they would say if seats were are empty, uh, uh -huh. if seats are empty, then only uh, one can use that air, air, airline points, right? So in that case, the cost is very low. Very low. Right? So you have to look at it uh, at what point of time customers are allowed to use the loyalty points so just to add the what uh, the second question came okay, if it is newly launched huh. so so first thing if you are allowing redemptions so if you are allowing redemptions and what, what is the expiry period so we have to look for similar industry or say banking industry or say say merchandise industry or 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 say airline industry what kind of redemption patterns they are getting it because we'll get some history because there are now lots of companies providing uh, uh, this loyalty points to customers and there are lots of redemptions also happening. So on an average, roughly, if I was to tell you, which, which is roughly 20% only gets utilized, 80% gets knocked out. This is what is the general trend that we yeah. see, Yogesh. Uh, because uh, uh, there are so many different avenues available. Hmm. Uh, so people go on changing and generally... <coughs> And secondly, the loyalty points uh, expiry dates are also they are keeping it very low, one year, two years, three years, right? So uh, people don't get chance to uh, spend uh, take take that to, to the fourth year. <laughs> but there if you are going to have a unlimited uh, expiry, then yes, it, it can could be had. Otherwise, twenty to thirty is fine. There are a few conditions also they put on that. Okay, okay, this many points you accumulate, then only redemption allowed. First year redemption not allowed for all points. So there are multiple conditions also there. So what Sir said is the redemption percentage is very low in that cases. But with digitization, it's going up. It's the, it was five percent, which has is to twenty percent in four years. The main thing is the data. How uh, the vendors. Keep the data for this redemption points. Then we have one more question, uh, which is uh, anyway, which yeah. says like this: whether any formula for calculation of 15 days, um, uh, whether the part of year should be rounded off, not rounded off. Means, for example, if my service is 11 years um, and just six months, will you consider it as 11 years or 12 years? See, I'll, I'll give you a classic problem. Uh, see, first is if someone completes five years, then it has to be rounded up. Means five years and half, five and a half years is six years. Four year and half is not five years. To, to be eligible to get uh, gratuity, one has to complete five years, right? Now, for calculation of one year, there are so many... Uh, uh, in the act, they have said that uh, 240 days can be considered as one year, right? This 240 days includes all, all leave. Then uh, there is one uh, thing which has mentioned is that if a company is working less than six days a uh, uh, week, then 180 days would be counted as one year, one year, right? Now, if you are working five days, but th then you are converted from six to five. So by increasing the five, 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 <coughs> five, 
five days hours, you have uh, converted to five, five days, right? Otherwise, it was six days only. So all this interpretation has got a different uh, uh, answers, but uh, it has been uh, established that 240 days can be considered as one year. So 120 days uh, means uh, 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 four months can be counted as uh, one year. Correct, correct. Half year, sorry, not half one year. year, half year. Half year. Okay, so actually, we are um, so we are already at seven uh, p.m. Uh, I don't know how much time we have. Uh, see, uh, industry-wise, like uh, loyalty points are there in uh, all these uh, stores. Uh, then petrol pump may have. Then banks, uh, credit card points are there. Uh, the, uh, <coughs> airlines points are there. So there are uh, all uh, everybody is trying to come out, come out with the loyalty points. Oh. And uh, so industry wise, roughly all industries are trying to uh, 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 take this like uh, petroleum companies are also giving points to the dealers also. Uh, so petroleum company car that is a petro card that that also accumulates the point. Hmm. So there are different industries wherein uh, these points are there. So when if we if they are offering such points, then the provision needs to be done, needs maintained to be into their accounts. Yeah. See, frankly, we are already crossed seven. So uh, we first thought of uh, pondering over the points, and we have not gone into details of uh, actuarial valuation or anything uh, because we first thought of that. Let's uh, give the perspective of what is employee benefit and what one should look at into it. So that uh, it, it would be helpful in the normal run as well as for your audits. Uh, so uh, this, this points were actually unusual points, which is not discussed on any forums. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to discuss that first point and then then common point, which comes to the employee so benefit accounting standard. If so, at so, all yes. the uh, uh, institute calls us, we again will come and give our other slides also. Uh, so I think... Uh, Seven, we are already past seven. So, Chairman, sir, how we want to go about? So, match to match, we can only talk about um, the valuation, just a calculator, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Only maybe what, what, what is WRC is, is saying. Uh, yeah. Any opinion from the attendees? Uh, any any opinion from attendees whether? Uh, uh, this was they fine, or we should have done something different. We would always welcome the opinions. Excellent session, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Chairman, sir, uh, maybe someone from WIRC. Just want to comment on um, 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 extension or should we right we now? Can, we can close it, uh, but they they love to. See. Rahul sir, Maitri madam. Until the time we Question get some question. all practical situations, make an excellent session. Please arrange another session for the rest of the slides. Sure. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Sir, who uh, is lecture up, sir? Sorry? Lecture who is sir? Ah. So, those who are out of things, please, please. Please, please. Slide me, please. Huh? Slides you can just... Mm -hmm.